both there. As you can see, I, as you will recognize if I, if you've seen any of my previous videos here on Whiskey for Beginners, I'm trying <clears throat> a new setup because I'm recording on my computer lap, on my laptop webcam and it's over that away. I can't see very well whether it's better than previous ways of doing it. But from where I'm sitting, it looks good. The picture's like this big from where I sit. <clears throat> but it seems to be better lit, which is something that I've been striving for all along and finally maybe have figured out how to do. The video today is actually the very last. I, I believe it's number 35. I don't have the... the uh, list up on the screen, but I believe it's number 35. It's the very last in a long list of videos that I have been recording to fulfill the whole purpose of the Whiskey for Beginners channel, which is to take all sorts of information about whiskey and put it in one place for beginners. And I'm going to adjust uh, the the uh, natural way to sit is facing this way, but I'm facing this way. So we'll see how that works. <clears throat> and I'm sorry, I, my, I didn't have a frog in my throat until I started recording. It always happens that way. But to actually get to the point here, I hate people who ramble and ramble and, and takes 10 minutes to even tell you what the video is about. To get to the point, the question that I'm asking and answering today is this. Can you get good whiskey at an affordable price? And the answer is yes. You might not get great whiskey at an affordable price, but you absolutely can get good whiskey that you can also afford. And I have four bottles here. I pulled them out of my storage in my, well, one was on top of the desk where in the wintertime I stick it so it will be at room temperature when I open it because cold whiskey to me just doesn't taste quite as good. But I have four bottles here and I'm just going to grab them in the order in which they are here on the table beside me. You can't see them and we'll hope that as I hold them out to the screen you'll be able to see them well. The first is Balconis Texas Pot Still Bourbon. It's made, and I don't remember the proportions, but it's made from Texas blue corn, Texas wheat, Texas rye, and Texas barley. I believe sprouted barley, what everybody calls malted barley. I'm an American. Why should I use British English? Sprouted barley. This until recently was my very favorite whiskey, period, bourbon or otherwise. And the, the taste is not quite as dense and, and full and rich as it once was. Uh, the, the people at Balconis tell me they haven't changed anything. So why the, this bottle and the two preceding it were not quite as good as the previous three, I don't know, but it is good bourbon. When I forget about how good it used to be and just evaluate it on what it is now, this is good bourbon. This is a bottle, I got this one at Total Wine for $29.99. It's a $30 bottle. I don't know how well it will show, especially since I write on my bottles, but it's good dark whiskey. It is aged at least 24 months in oak, so at least two years. And it is a straight bourbon whiskey, which means it has aged at least two years. It uh, comes from Texas, not from some other state, and then bottled in Texas. There are no additives, uh, no coloring, no flavoring, just water to proof it down to 92 proof. The next bottle is Knob Creek Nine Year. It is a Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey, so the bourbon uh, straight 
whiskey rules and the bourbon rules apply to it, of course. And I have done videos on those. I believe I've uploaded them already. I don't have that in front of me. And if I rely on my memory, it's going to be a disaster. But this bottle, I got this at Kelly Liquors, the Mountain Run location here in Albuquerque, which is always a, a dollar or two more than total wine. And this was $29.99 also, so a $30 bottle. This is now my favorite bourbon. My, uh, I haven't decided on a favorite overall whiskey uh, because there's I don't know of anything anywhere that I've ever had which matches what the Balconis bourbon used to be. But this is very good bourbon. It's nine years old, as it says on the label. Uh, Jim Beam, which makes it, had to take that off for a while. They have now put, been able to put it back on. So the youngest whiskey in here is nine years. There may be some 15 for all we know. Whatever it takes to blend together and get that, that knob crick profile. Very good whiskey. Next up, I have Melicorn. It's corn whiskey. And corn whiskey, by law, has to have a mash bill of at least 80% corn. And here's the crucial difference between corn whiskey and bourbon. It must age either in used charred barrels or new uncharred barrels. And what I understand is that Heaven Hill, who makes this, it uses their own bourbon barrels once they've dumped the bourbon to age the mellow corn. Now, corn whiskey, because of the rules regarding aging, unless you age it a long time, is going to be lighter in color and lighter in flavor. But it can be very good. This is not the best corn whiskey I've ever had, but it's good corn whiskey. And at Kelly's, this is $17.99, an $18 bottle. You can see I've drunk it down. And uh, I, I rotate through my bottles. Every time I come to the end, I randomize the order, put them in the desk in that order, and then pull according to that rotation. But if I don't like a bottle, I'm not going to drink from it much. So this is very good and very affordable. This is the cheapest one I have right now. And then, and I realize this is whiskey for beginners, and beginners are not necessarily going to be ready for higher proof. But right now we're talking about good and affordable. So, Old Granddad 114. It's, again, a Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey. This also comes from Jim Beam. These two are both Jim Beam bottles. And if all you know is Jim Beam White Label, you do not know the quality of whiskey they can turn out when they want to. Old Granddad 114. I can't remember who the old granddad who's on the bottle, but it, it, it's a real person. Oh, yes, it came to me. That is Basil Hayden. I don't know if you really can see the label. But you can look it up online, and that's a bust of Basil Hayden. And I do not recommend Basil Hayden bourbon. Now, you may like it, and if you do, by all means, drink it. But I find it to be just more expensive Jim Beam. This, on the other hand, is not Jim Beam. Look at how dark it is. It's 114 proof, which is why, why it's called up 114. This is also a bottle I got at Kelly. And this is $39.99. Now, that's kind of on the outside edge of affordable for me. As a rule, my whiskey budget tops off at 40 I have bought more expensive bottles. The most expensive bottle I ever had was a Balconis True Blue Corn Whiskey. It was a store pick for total wine. That means it's a single barrel, of course. And it ran me like 58 bucks. I cannot do that all the time. I do that very seldom. Uh, one of the reasons I, my uh, Jim B, Jim B, Jack Daniels single barrel barrel proof is just the pint bottle. 
of 375 milliliters, I think in pints and gallons and, and fifths and such. I, I learned that terminology years ago when I was a kid. And now that I drink whiskey, I'm not going to trouble myself to learn all this metric stuff. Although the metric system is much more rational than, than the other. But uh, the reason I have that Jack Daniel single barrel barrel proof in the small bottles is that small bottle is 35 bucks. I can't afford the full fifth. Now, your budget may be higher than mine. It may be lower. It may be that uh, 18 bucks for a bottle of whiskey is about all you can afford. And that's okay. Nobody with a brain anyway, nobody with any sense is going to tell you that you have to drink a particular price of whiskey. And there are others that I don't have here. I'd have brought them out if I had them. But Evan Williams Bottled and Bond is good, and it's like $20, $25. Old Forester 100, which is 100 proof, so if you're new, maybe you're not quite ready for it yet, is like $25. Excuse me. I'm um, trying to think of what else. Well, my mind is revolving and coming up blank. But uh, you can get good whiskey. Maybe not great whiskey, but you can get good whiskey at a good price. You don't have to chase the horsey corks and, and all the uh, FOMO, fear of missing out. You don't have to to chase all these rare and expensive bottles. You can have good whiskey for not much money. And if you're so inclined, you can look at all them others chasing all that other stuff and say, ha, 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 I got more money in my pocket for other things and I'm enjoying it too. So, stand by one. You have stood by one. That's an old Air Force expression. When I was in the comm center at Osan, somebody might ring the bell at the window. And if I, we were right in the middle of something, we could not stop. That we had to finish and cover away from, from eyesight because it was classified. We just holler, stand by one. I did that one time to Colonel Arata, the group commander. And, of course, he didn't cry because we had to do that. But anyway, you have stood by one, and for this last of the planned videos, I'm not going to hold up an imaginary glass. I'm not going to hold up a real glass with imaginary whiskey. Although there is the uh, poem which talks about imaginary gardens with real toads in them. Can't remember who wrote the poem offhand. But just a splash of melicorn, because... It is at room temperature. I'm going to hold this up. I salute all the very few at, at the time I record this. It's not even 20 people who are subscribed to my channel. I salute all those who are beginning in whiskey. I salute all those who were in whiskey long ago and have helped me out. To those who know good whiskey and who are willing to help beginners, I salute you. Here's how. <laughs>